At around 11.45 p.m., gunshots rang out. Adam Matos had shot Megan Brown and her father to death. But he didn't stop there. He then bludgeoned Nick, Megan's boyfriend, 21 times with a hammer before doing the same to Megan's mother, Margaret. In addition to this, he zip-tied Margaret's hands, covered her mouth with duct tape, and asphyxiated her with a plastic bag before crushing her skull. While this was occurring, the son Megan and Adam shared, four-year-old Tristan was still in the house, listening to the sounds of his immediate family being killed. After the murder, Adam didn't wait long to jump into action. He began cleaning up the scene, going to the local store, purchasing a shovel, and preparing to get rid of the bodies. But this would prove more difficult than he'd anticipated. For a while, he left them where they lay, allowing decomposition to start taking place. In a shocking display of callousness, he went on Craigslist and began listing the family's items for sale, including some of the puppies Megan's mother was breeding. Over the next few days, while Adam tried to cover his tracks, he would leave Tristan alone in the house. Soon, the smell of decay was overwhelming. Using the family's van, Adam took the bodies to a wooded area one mile down the road and dumped them in a pile. Then, he headed back to the house where he stayed for a few days with Tristan. After six days of no contact with the Browns, concerned friends called the police to do a welfare check. At this point, Adam was still at home, but upon realizing the police were at the door, he fled the scene with Tristan, taking a route through the neighbor's backyard. When police arrived at Megan's home, the smell of death was unmistakable. Police found the front door wide open. They entered and discovered a bloodbath. Blood stained the floors, garage, and the family van which had been left abandoned. Some bloody blankets had also been left nearby. Authorities began scoping out the area and in the canal behind the house, found two long rifles, a crossbow, and a hammer dumped there. They had the murder weapons, but where was their suspect? And what did he do with the bodies? Another officer, just a mile away from the home, caught wind of the stench of rotting flesh. When he investigated the area, he saw four bodies carelessly piled on top of one another and in a severe state of decomposition. Initially, authorities suspected that the killer was Nick Leonard. However, when the medical examiner came back and reported that Nick was one of the dead, all signs pointed to Megan's ex, Adam Matos. Adam and Megan had met in their 20s while in Pennsylvania. Although Megan had a boyfriend at the time, she soon became enamored with Adam and fell pregnant with their son, Tristan. Tristan was born with autism and his parents had wildly different parenting styles. Adam was a disciplinarian, whereas Megan was soft and quiet. Adam eventually moved in with Megan and her family, but before long, the pair were fighting. It became so bad that oftentimes, Megan's father, Greg, had to step in. The problem reached a fever pitch and Adam's outburst became more and more frequent with the violence escalating. This was not Adam's first foray into violence. He had a sketchy past, having been arrested several times before he met Megan for auto theft, marijuana possession as well as trespassing at an ex-girlfriend's house and assaulting her new boyfriend. Adam had a jealous streak, something which Megan would find out. Adam was also unemployed while living with Megan, which caused even more strife between the couple. Eventually, they decided to break up, but continued living together. When Megan's family decided to move to Florida, Adam went with them to be close to his son, although the situation wasn't ideal for Megan. Once in Florida, Megan got a job at a bar where she met Nick Leonard. Soon after, the pair began dating. Adam wasn't pleased with this and demanded more attention. The fights between Megan and Adam began to escalate, and on August 28, 2014, it came to a head when Adam pushed Megan up against the wall, held a knife to her throat and threatened to kill her. After Adam had dumped the bodies of Megan, her parents, and Nick, he fled the area with Tristan. Initially, he took a cab to the bus terminal, but after learning that no buses were departing that day, he checked into a nearby motel, using his real name. Of course, it didn't take long for police to track him down. He was swiftly arrested and taken into custody. However, detectives didn't tell him that they had found the bodies. They instead told him he was being arrested on domestic violence charges for the 911 call Megan had made and waited for him to confess of his own accord. But Adam thought he was smarter than that, and when detectives asked who could take care of Tristan, Adam replied that Megan could. 
It wasn't long before detectives eventually had to confront Adam with the evidence of the murders after his son began speaking to officers about the ordeal. The four-year-old was traumatized by the incident but told officers that his father had killed his mother. Adam maintained his innocence, even pointing fingers at Nick Leonard's ex-girlfriend. Despite Adam's claims, he was charged with four counts of first-degree murder. During his trial in 2017, Adam claimed self-defense and that he feared for his life while being accosted by Megan's boyfriend Nick. He claimed that he had simply returned to the house to fetch some things and that Nick, armed with a gun, began assaulting and strangling him and pointed the gun directly at Adam's chest. Adam then grabbed a knife on a nearby dresser and stabbed Nick repeatedly in the arm, injuring him. It was at this point that Megan's father Greg walked into the room with a rifle. According to Adam, when Greg tried to shoot, the gun misfired, giving him just enough time to take a shot at the elderly man. Adam claimed he shot him in the lower back and fired a second shot nearby where Megan was hiding. Allegedly, the bullet bounced and entered her skull through her eye socket, immediately killing her. Matos then stated that after he realized he had killed the mother of his child, he snapped and was fueled by paranoia and grief. He then used a hammer to kill Nick Leonard, hitting his skull over 21 times. Then he lay in wait for Megan's mother to return home from work. When she arrived, he repeatedly hit her over the head with the hammer before asphyxiating her. At this point, even he had to acknowledge that he didn't consider her much of a threat and couldn't really justify why he had slaughtered her. After Adam's testimony, the jury deliberated and thankfully was not convinced by his claims of self-defense as the murders appeared to be premeditated as well as the attempt to cover them up. What's more, is that Adam had his cell phone on him at all times and easily could have called for help if his life was being threatened. The jury found him guilty on all counts. Although it was expected he would receive the death penalty, he was sentenced to four consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole. In the wake of the harrowing events that unfolded in the Brown family household, the conclusion of Adam Mato's trial leaves a chilling resonance. The tale of tragedy and brutality raises questions about the intricate web of relationships, the consequences of unchecked jealousy, and the devastating toll it took on the lives involved.